Today we're going to be changing out the ignition coils. I've actually already done the driver's side, or left hand side of the car. Uh, that's the bank with five, six, seven, and eight. We'll be taking the air box off along with the emissions air tube. Of course, the covers for the coils, and that should be everything you actually have to take out of the way to get to the coils. Of course, the, the driver's side is much easier with uh, nothing having to come off but the cover and then the coils. So we're gonna get started by taking all this loose. Uh, this has several clips that pop loose, and we're gonna be taking that out. Bolts that hold this down, we'll be taking those loose, and this will be released on its quick release and release our connector and we should be able to lift that completely out of our way and have access to that cover for the coils right here. Do be careful working back here if your car is just run because of course you do have your uh, manifold right there. can be hot. Mine has not been running very long so I should be able to do this without having to worry about burning myself. So you can do this either two ways. You can undo the retainer here and take this off separately from the box top. Or you can slide a long screwdriver down here, catch that clip, and pop it loose. Either way works. Taking the tube loose is probably the easier way to do it. It's a eight millimeter headed bolt. There you go, got both those bolts loose. Should be able to pop that off. So as always, I like to throw a rag over this so there's no chances for anything to get in there. We are going to have it off for just a little bit. What we have here is a 7mm headed bolt. These should not be on very tight. You don't want to go back down real tight either. This is all plastic. So as I always mention on these older cars, be careful, it will crack and break quite easily. I'm using a swivel headed socket to make it easier to get to some of these lower bolts. There we go, and the cover's off. You may want to go ahead and inspect your cover at this time as well, make sure that the uh, rubber gasket here even though it is not replaceable um, you could probably do a, a repair with just some silicone uh, in essence you could clean this off if it was getting really bad deteriorated and coming apart just run you a bead of silicone kind of flatten it out a little bit and then let it set up before you ever put it back on that way you have a just a dried bead of silicone on this quick cheap way to fix that if you're seal here starts deteriorating because you're wanting to try to keep moisture and other things out of this area here so once again we've got a seven millimeter bolt on all these coils none of these coils seem to be giving me any trouble now they may not be performing as well as they did once upon a time but I did find a good deal on a set of eight, so I'm going to replace them all due to the fact that I had the one uh, definitely fail. And I'd already gone through all the diagnostics on that in the previous video and uh, what all it took to, to finally get that to show up right. So I had a while that I was having an intermittent issue, and it wasn't until the issue actually showed its face while I was at highway speeds that good... Uh, diagnostic codes really came up. Before that I was just getting simple misfire codes. Nothing about what cylinder or anything else. So there's two bolts per coil. One on the top, one on the bottom. 
they are a different color than the bolts that hold the upper cover on so shouldn't be mixing those up be sure to, uh, to not drop them there are places they can get caught down there and make it really hard to find them again and as for the connectors just got a, a release here on the top to kind of wiggle it off may even have to get a screwdriver to kind of pry on it a little bit to break it loose so i'm just going to use a broad tipped flathead to just simply catch right in between the connector and press the release twist the screwdriver and it just kind of pops it off so once again screwdriver down in between the gap press the release and then twist the screwdriver and that pops it out looks like we got a touch of oil in our connectors so we're going to be cleaning those out today so we don't want that in there Let's see if we've got some sort of leak in here causing that to happen. So there we go. One, two, three, and four. So we do have oil down in our second and fourth over here. So that's actually going to be two and four. I do have a little oil down in them, which is very disconcerting because I just did all new valve cover gasket seals not maybe a year ago. So these are already leaking. So at this point, this job has become more than just simply change the coils. And that's a 5 8 to take the plugs out. So when you take the plug out, you're just simply going to let all the oil that's down that plug drain right back down into the engine. You'll burn it off. Of course, the car will smoke and run really bad the first time you fire it up it will burn it all off if you've got a suction tool or something like that you could run that before you do this it'll help keep the engine oil from getting down there because it is not a it's not a good thing to do that burn this engine oil run it through your catalytic converters is not good for them so if you can avoid it, do so. So there you go, you can see that spark plug's just covered in oil. Surprisingly, the car ran smooth, even though there was that much oil down in there. Usually this kind of thing will make your coils and plugs have a loss of spark, a loss of heat, so your car won't run as good. You'll actually start having a little bit of a rough idle out of that. So. And of course, it's not good on your coils to have that oil in there. It'll wind up making them have to work harder and eventually just fail that much faster. Once again, quite a bit of oil on there. These plugs are fine. We'll simply clean them and reuse them. These plugs were put in at the same time I did the timing chain and the valve covers and all that. The plug itself doesn't look like any oil's been burning or anything down the engine they're definitely okay now the other two are dry as can be so there's nothing to worry about there what i'm going to do now is simply roll up a rag and shove it down in each one of these ports and then pull it back out kind of work it around be sure not to cram it down too far that way you can still get your needle nose pliers in there and pull it back out. You got most of it out, but it's still got a little bit down at the very, very bottom. I'm just going to rip this rag in half. That way I can get further down in there with a the smaller roll. I got it now. Yep, there we go. So we caught all the oil out of there. And we just need to do this back one. So we don't want to put our new coils back down in a nasty port. We just wind up messing them up that much faster. I'm 
There we go. Got that one in one go. Nice and clean. We'll be sure and wipe our valve cover coil bay here out. It does have oil in it too. So as it gets hot, the vapors from the oil will come up. And that's why I had oil off of my connectors. We'll be hitting the connectors, of course, with a little bit of cleaner. Most likely a carb or a brake cleaner, something that's not too uh, abrasive to the plastic, but we'll get the oil cleaned out real good. Now these bolts have a 10 millimeter head on them. We'll be getting the four piece, we'll back off. A few of these bolts do have long threads on them like this one here so you will have to use a deep socket for those and those are for retaining the dresser parts on such as this piece of trim that goes right here so these go across the top across the bottom and there's also two right in the middle where the coils are. Now there is a bolt here that lines up directly behind the strut tower mount. So it is kind of a tight area, but I found that using just a deep well socket head and the standard kind of thin, I know a lot of ratchets aren't this thin that helps me get down in there and get that loose and it still is tight so you can get it broke loose but you're probably going to back it off by hand with just the socket so the very back bottom one you have to use a swivel to get down there there just simply is not enough room for anything different and it is in a very tight location in between a heat shield. Like I said, with the swivel, you can get down in there and get it out. These are the kind of swivels we're using. You can also buy the adapter uh, that just cr creates any straight socket into a swivel as well. Either way should work. We want to be sure and undo our clip here. Get that wire up and over. We got to get our coil wires out of the way. Get our variable valve timing solenoid connector out of the way. And you should be able to wiggle it loose and come on out. Be sure and come straight up with that, not to uh, allow anything to fall off and fall down in. Right, we've got that out of the way. Don't forget to put plugs like I did. I forgot to put my plugs back in here before I started pulling all that loose means that we got the spark plugs out and go ahead and put those plugs in there or once you have them cleaned out you can go ahead and run your spark plugs right back down in doesn't matter either way and it looks like we've had a little bit of leak on this back corner possibly as well i'm not positive the old gaskets were leaking pretty good before on the exhaust so that just may be residue that i had from my previous gasket and here is your tensioner that's very well known on these engines to fail because the originals that were put in these cars were all plastic. This one is here, as you can see, is, is aluminum. I've already done the, the repair job on this one. And there's also other tensioners down off in here. Uh, of course, you got two per side, this upper here, and then a lower that's pushing against a track that holds the chain in place. You can kind of see the track right through there pushing on the chain on the pushing down on it and there's another one down in there you can see it it's kind of the knuckle of it just close to the chain there directly behind the VVT solenoid here so those are what you replace when you do that job replace all those tracks you replace the tensioners and the chains as well at that time because most likely you're going to have excessive wear on the chains 
from grinding across parts that have broken and now they've run directly across metal. So you can see where I had put a little silicone here on the on the new valve cover gasket. And then once again down here, that's where that front cover meets the head. So you want to put a little something there for that little kind of gap that is there. So we'll be cleaning that off and putting new on going to attempt to reuse these gaskets they do not seem to be bad I have a feeling the problem is actually the valve cover itself probably got a little warm at some point in time and it flexed or bowed and now it's not holding a proper seal across the whole thing like it should so one of the things we'll have to do before we go back on is clean all this up you know get any oil residue we can off of it we want to have it nice and clean before it goes back down most likely what we'll be doing is putting a touch of silicone on all these ports rather than having to go out and buy a whole new gasket kit and hope that it holds as well that way we have a definite seal and shouldn't have to worry about this again for a long long time right, so we're going to clean this off with a little bit of carburetor cleaner here just going to spray a little bit on a rag get a little damp if you don't want to spray it all inside here you'll wind up really having to do a lot of cleaning it's up to you if you wish to do that, but uh, this has all been cleaned up fairly recently, so I'm not going to be doing that kind of cleaning on this. just want to get these seals good and cleaned off so there's not a ton of oil on here keeping the silicone from adhering to it. You got to be careful depending on the rags you use. It may leave a little debris, so be sure and wipe away any debris there. And get all this good and clean brake fluid cleaner as i mentioned before probably be a little abrasive for this so stick to like a carb cleaner brake cleaner could possibly turn these rubber gaskets into mush depends on how strong that brake cleaner is that you're using so there we go i think we're good enough make sure you get those good and clean too because those do seal stuff such as uh, vapors and whatnot from getting up into the actual ignition coil bay. We will be uh, putting a little silicone on those as well to make sure that they do seal good. Making sure my fingers are clean as well by cleaning them off with carb cleaner. And use rubber gloves if you wish. Probably be better. It's not exactly great for you to rub this stuff on your hands. So we're going to be using just some standard high heat mega black is this uh, Versakim brand is what they call it but it is a high heat and you do need to be using a high heat uh, you can also use the red type uh, even though it's called ultra black it actually is this coppery red color just as long as it's a high heat and oil resistant that's what you're looking for so when you start putting this on here it'll be ready to go so we're actually going to put the bead not here but actually on the head and we'll be sure and put a little bead around each one of those uh, on the head. Now I think I'm just for good measure, because it does look like a little bit of oil has been getting passed here. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of a bead on that bottom as well. I have a feeling this, this valve cover has uh, unfortunately seen just a little too much heat at some point in time. Or possibly was removed when the engine was still hot. I did not mention that before, but I want to take time to mention that now. You don't want to take these valve covers off immediately after you shut the engine off when it's good and hot. A little warm, you should be fine, but if that engine's to full running temperature, you need to let that engine set for a while before you even think about taking these off, because you definitely will be taking a chance of warpage if you remove them while they're, they're really hot. So what we're using here is a feeler gauge across the straight edge to kind of show you what we're talking about. We're pretty sure that this was having some sort of flex or bow to it and sure enough it does if you watch right here see how easy that goes in between the gasket and that's the same feeler gauge as you saw that wouldn't go in on the other ones and they can go in there of course that was port number two that it was kind of loose or that it was real loose on and then port number eight or four you'll notice on it it seems to have a little bit more of a gap there too so like I said, we're going to put a bead of silicone on all four of these before we put the gasket back down. I'm sure there's other ways to do this, such as building up the gasket or making your own gaskets and just making them a little thicker. But this is the method we're going to use is just simply add a little silicone on there, 
it should hold just fine. And just like we did with the valve cover, I've already wiped this down with a dry cloth, so now I'm going over it with one with a little bit of carb cleaner on it off of all these contact surfaces. Make sure they're good and dry and clean. I had to get a razor blade and scrape off some of this silicone that was already up here. But we'll be putting a new bead there at that seam as I mentioned before. So just be sure and give it a good wipe down on any of those contact surfaces, including here in the middle. And make sure we get the cleanest surfaces we can get. And if you use a razor blade like I did to clean off that surface, be very careful. This is aluminum and surprisingly uh, it may be to you that it don't take much from a razor blade to shave into aluminum. So you do want to be very, very, very careful when you're doing that because you can wind up creating gaps or dips in your va or in your head and creating a problem later on that is going to cause an oil leak. So do be careful when you're doing that. I'll try to get a little bit of this oil off of this heat shield here as well. There we go. It's quite a bit of oil down on that heat shield. All right, I think we're ready to uh, put our silicone on and then drop our cover back on. We're going to take a little bead and put it right here at this seam. Kind of smooth it out just a little bit. But you want to leave a little bit of a lump right here in the center. And then same thing down at the bottom down here. Just a little bead about the size of a pea. So there we are there. And then around our seal here. We want to put a little bead. Try not to get it down in the hole. Same thing for our spark plug ports. Just get us a little bit here around this edge. Of course, if you're using a little better bottle of this or a brand new bottle of this, unlike I am, you can actually just squeeze a little thin bead out. Unfortunately, the one of mine is clogged, so I'm kind of having to do it this way. So if yours is like mine, you can kind of see a little bit of a ring there. That's where the gasket's been resting. Just kind of put the, the stuff there where that little ring is. And you don't need a ton, just a little bit. Just make sure you get a fairly even coat all the way around. So right here we had a little bit of oil, just kind of run back down a little bit. So I'm wiping that off so that we can get some good silicone down there. Once again we had a little oil run down so I'm going to wipe that off before I even start this. And there we go. Like I said I'm going to put a little bead down here on this bottom corner, kind of a thin layer, because that seemed to be letting some oil out as well. This will help that from happening. So there we go. Ready to put the valve cover back on. Here we go. I'm going to go down as smooth as possible, as straight as possible. When you do go back down, you try not to do a whole lot of shifting around when you go down. You just want to pop it right down where it goes. And that's it. I'm going to a bolt or two in. And run these down to where they're just barely tight. Just enough to hold it in place. And be careful, run these down. Make sure you're getting them in there straight. If it starts binding it all, back off. That aluminum will not take much to damage. Once I get these all tightened down, I will have to get my torque specs and torque all these back to a proper torque. I really suggest you go with a pattern of inside out. So you want to get your two inner bolts torqued down to torque specs and then work in your center. And then at the bottom, you can work left to right and do the offset at the top. That way you get your, your torque spread across it evenly as you go down, just like you would for a a wheel bolt pattern you're trying to even that torque out as you put it down that center bolt you're going to start it 
with the socket on there and just run it down by hand. Be sure and get your connector down here or your push pin down here for your wire here. I don't know if I pointed that out before, but there is a connector here that pushes into an eyelet like up here to let that wire stay in place. So we've got all our bolts started. I think we're time to get our torque and get all these torqued down. All right, so we're fixing to start our torque. That's 11 newton meters for these valve cover bolts. And that works out to about 97 and a half inch pounds. So I've got an extension and a swivel. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it even 100. Like I said, you want to start in the center and get these torqued down first. Then you want to work from the center of the valve cover out. And then we're going to go down to the bottom. Okay, so that gets those. So now we're going to have to, of course, switch over to our deep for these. Because I have to shorten, I'm going to actually back off just a little bit because I'm taking my extension out to try to even this out. I'm going to do this bottom one to here. There we go. And then we're going to come up and then back across down. So I'm going to have to bump back up because I'm going to have to put extension in. So I'm bumping back up to my full 100. And I dropped down to about 97 whenever I went down here with just the socket. And from there, we're going to go back over here on the top. And back towards the bottom on the other side. And they may have a torque pattern exactly. I am unaware of it. So I'm following just a, a spread pattern here. So there we go. And I'm going to go back over to this bottom. We actually need the swivel for this one. And then our two fronts. And back at the bottom. And there we go. So now we've got all of our bolts torqued down to 11 newton meters. I think we're ready to clean our connectors, put our coils back in, let it set for a little bit, give that silicone just a little bit of time to, to firm up a little. Uh, you don't really have any pressure on this. You can actually take off pretty quickly. I'd say no more than about 15 minutes is a must for this stuff to kind of set up enough that you can actually drive off. Just checking our seals here. As you see, we have quite a bit of push out. So I'm just going to kind of smooth that off so that our cool packs don't get bound up by it. And there we go. So typically about the time it takes you to get all this cleaned up and put back in, you should be fine to go ahead and drive off. So I need to torque down those two spark plugs that I pulled out and cleaned up. The torque specs for your spark plugs is 20 foot-pound. So I'm already set to 21 because I have a long extension here. Technically that is a six inch. So I probably should go 22 going by the rule of thumb, but with these being spark plugs, I don't want to take a chance. I'd rather be just a little, just a touch looser, just as a cautionary. This is a aluminum head. We're gonna tighten these down. So there we are, spark plug two. I had some oil down in it, all nice and clean. Torque back down. Didn't have to do anything to one, didn't have to do anything to three. They were all good and clean, but also had quite a bit of oil down in it, so we had to retorque that one. Everything's looking nice and clean in there now. Just doing uh, a little bit of cleanup here, once again, with some uh, carburetor cleaner, as well as on the connectors to get the oil out of the connectors. We should be able to put all this back together. So here we are after doing a little bit of cleanup. You can see those little kind of brown spots there. That's where the, the oils kind of dribbled out after I sprayed a little bit of a, that same cleaner that I use for wiping the valve cover gasket seal off. It's not real abrasive to plastics and rubbers, so it's a good solution to use for this. And with it being aerosol, it'll help you kind of spray down off in those ports and get the oil out of those. You see just that little bit I've touched there, a little more oils come off. Just clean them up real good before you put them all back on because that can cause problems down the road as well. So I'm just using the rag that I just used to kind of catch any blow off from the connectors being cleaned to use that residue to clean up any more that's in here and kind of help pull some of that mist of oil that's been cooked in here and get it off the plastic. I'm trying to keep some of that smell and any more of it being cooked up and put back into our connectors. There you go, got a little bit more gunk off of here. So 
So I think we're ready to put our coils back in. This is the part we're going to use today. We got these as a set of eight for not a terribly too bad of a price, I don't think. Really, actually, pretty good when you consider the a factory one's going to cost you substantially more than all eight. We'll see how well they work. Hopefully, they work out pretty good. But these were about two hundred dollars for all eight. So you got a one A E C I zero zero two eight four. I've been running the first four that I got over on the other bank after I found out that the uh, coil over there was bad and they've been running just fine for about mm, a week or so. Uh, just now I got time to come over and look at this side and uh, we're gonna get these in see how that works out. Here's just a side-by-side -side of the original Denso is your original. It's pretty much very very same design and the molds look almost identical. They are using a different kind of sealant there it looks like. But all in all, everything looks good. It's like the boot may be a slightly different material as well. It's a much darker color. But uh, very, very similar in design. So they did put a little paint on these where these they didn't put any paint on them. Doesn't look like it's a necessity is a difference between the two. So here we are, we got them all back in, just kind of started with our fingers. So I'm going to run these down some more. I don't have the torque spec on these, but I, I really don't expect it to be very much. I would say get them tight and then give them a tiny bit of a turn. One, two newton meters really should not take much to hold these in place. But be sure and have both of them started before you actually tighten it down because these will twist as you you tighten them like I said, get it tight give it a tiny little twist there you go you you should be good there's not any kind of pressure that's being put on these we just need to make sure that they're staying in place so there we are we got all those in so it comes to the wires you want to be sure and get them connected. Found it's easier to get them all connected before you try to snap these in. But you want to make sure you get that pushed down on that pin. And your wires need to be on this side of this blade. That way they don't get pinched by that cover. So once again, we have that pin. It needs to be slid down in there. And you also have back here an opening that once you tighten that plate down, it's actually going to put pressure and hold that in place. And you'll probably notice that my wires do have some cracks in them, so at some point in time, most likely in the near future, I am going to have to do some sort of replacement of that harness. Not something I'm overly excited about doing by any means, but it probably will have to be done, even if it's just me splicing in some new wires and soldering some in. I'm not sure how we're going to have to do this. I don't know this harness that well. It looks like it ties back into this main harness back here so it looks like it's going to be a pretty ugly one if you have to buy that whole new harness i'm sure i'll be in there doing just repairs instead of replacing but there we go everything snapped back in place just need to put the final cover back on the procedure on the other side is the same all you've got to do is pull the cover off and change the coils assuming that you don't have any oil leak like i had on this one my other side was just dry and clean looked great so once again i don't have the torque on these but you don't need much, about a newton meter. Just get them tight, give them a little cinching. I do recommend you put this back on the same way it came off because of that gap that I talked about earlier on the wiring harness. You want to make sure that it has that bulge right there to help seal that up. There you go, six bolts hold that plate on. Going back on with the bolts for the intake the eight millimeter headed bolts once again no torch spec but just get them snug get them down tight and then just give them a touch more of a turn that's it there we go those are on I've already snapped on the mass airflow meter connector already snapped on our ventilation tube so I just gotta tighten up the clamp here I've snapped down all of my connectors on my air box and the VVT, of course, is good and connected. Got my cover back on. We'll be able to fire this up here in just a second. There we go. Everything's back in place. 
my clamp is tight. One other thing I want to note, all the coils I took out had been firing just fine. Probably not the greatest uh, output, but they were fine. So I will be hanging on to them just as spares in case something does go wrong with, with these. And I've also got the convertibles, so I may wind up having to use them on it. Good to hang on to them. Just clean them up before I put them up. Get all that oil off. Don't want to leave it on there to slowly eat away at the plastic and rubber. But those will be something that will be handy, I'm sure, in the, in the future. Have them just simply as a, oh no, we had a coil go bad. Throw them in and order in a new coil if need to and go from there. Here we go. We're going to start it up after getting all the oil leaks and coil packs replaced. Fire it right up. No problem. Of course, it's complaining that the hood's open. It's normal because the hood is open. Really didn't have too much oil in there, so really didn't seem to give it too much of a... Got a little bit of smoke here. I don't know if y'all can see that. It did have a little smoke roll back. Go ahead and let it idle for a little bit. It's definitely idling really smooth. I think we're good. I'll take it for a drive and make sure everything's doing okay afterward. There you go.